Hello, welcome to another video. So we'll be taking the integral of a rational expression that's also a radical expression. So um, this might throw you off the first time you see it because it's not like it's 1 over x, the radical over a radical. Everything is together. How are you supposed to... Uh, are you supposed... What do you do? Well, you would... There are many ways, not many ways, but there are some other strategies of doing this, but I want to give you a general approach to integrating an expression like this. What I would say is, since the radical is over everything, give the radical to the top and give it to the bottom. So I want you to look at this. Consider the expression, the radical of 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Okay, this expression alone can be rewritten as the square root of 1 minus x over the square root of 1 plus x. If you can see this, then it makes a lot of sense because this expression then can be rationalized. You see, if you saw this huge block, you wouldn't think of rationalization. But now you can see that I have a rational and a rational, then the thought of rationalization will come to you. However, there's something I want you to see. Whenever you rationalize for um, integration, the numerator is usually the problem because if you cannot split the numerator, or you cannot move the numerator around, or you can have smaller fractions, then it becomes a problem. So what you want to do is rationalize the top, not the bottom. Remember that. Rationalize the top, not the bottom. Now, if you try the top and it doesn't work out, you might go back to rationalizing the bottom in case it clears out. But usually, a problem like this, the top will be what you want to focus on. So we're going to be multiplying. Now, when we do the rationalization, what do you think we're doing? We're trying to get rid of the square root sign. What would you multiply the top by to get, this, get rid of the square root sign? You have to multiply this by itself, okay? So do not multiply by 1 plus x, because if you do that, you're not, you'll, you'll not be able to get rid of this one. So you want to multiply the top by itself. And you also want to divide by the same thing. So this is the correct multiplication. Whatever you want to simplify and get rid of the radical is what you use to multiply itself. Okay, so that's what I call rationalizing because now I can get rid of this. So I have this expression is now going to be the product of this and this is just going to be 1 minus x. And the product of this times this is going to be the square root of 1 plus x times 1 minus x. We can't get rid of the square root down here. And what does this give us? This gives us 1 minus x divided by, well, this is the difference of two squares, the square root of 1 minus x squared. So this integral can actually be written as the integral, we can refer this way, this integral from 0 to 1 of this expression, which is easy now, 1 minus x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. So you notice that this problem could have been written this way, but that's how it is. So what can you do with this? Can you use u substitution? Let's look. If, you, if, you, if we make 1 minus x squared our u, then the derivative is just negative 2x, but the top doesn't have negative 2x. It has 1. This, this 1 is a problem. So if this 1 wasn't there, it wouldn't be a problem. We can just because we have x there. So what you can do, which is the advantage of you doing this, is split this in two. So we can write this expression here as the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared plus, sorry, not plus, minus, minus x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. 
then we put all of this dx. Do you see this? Because this expression can be split. Remember, if you have x plus y over b, you can write it as x over b plus y over b. That's what we just did, okay? Even if this was minus, okay? That's the case. So now that we have integrals that are familiar, you just need to think quickly about how to integrate each part. So we could separate this and separate this, but look carefully. This is what you integrate to get arc sine x. So we don't need to waste time on this because we could easily say that this expression is this integral is arc sine x. You see, that's arc sine x evaluated from zero to one. And then what is this? Well, we don't know what this is, but when you integrate this, you can use u substitution because the derivative of one minus x squared is negative two x, which is a multiple of just x. So you're gonna get x dx, okay? So we can find um, the differential. So let's do a u substitution here. So we say let u be equal to one minus x squared. So what will du be? du is gonna be negative two x dx negative one half du will be equal to x dx and this is our x dx okay so let's write it out here so this is going to be minus the integral of um, from zero to one of i'm going to write it in a nice way so it's going to be one over the square root of one minus x squared times x dx so what we're gonna do now is replace x dx with this, and we're gonna replace one minus x squared with u. So we're gonna evaluate u since we've you've done a u substitution. So I'm going to evaluate u at the point where x equals zero. And when x equals zero, what will u be? One minus zero, which is one. And evaluate u when x equals one, it's gonna be one minus one squared, which is zero. So our upper bound is now zero and our lower bound is one. Okay, I should have switched it. But, so we can write this as equal to, we can evaluate this. What angle will give you one when you take the sine? That is arc sine of an angle of a number is, sorry, the sine of an angle is one. What is that angle? That's how you read this. The sine of an angle is one. What's the angle? It's pi over two. So this is pi over two. I'm evaluating minus, the lower evaluation, the sine of an angle is zero. What's the angle? The angle must be zero. So that's where we stop. We just stop here, minus. Now let's take this integral. If we do the integration now, look at what we have here. The lower bound is now one. So we're integrating from one to zero of one over, this is now the square root of u. And x dx will now be replaced by what? negative one half to u. So we're gonna have times negative one over two du. Okay, so let's clean this up. So this is clearly pi over two minus this integral. Let's clean it up one more time. I'm gonna pull this negative here and negative one half. So we're gonna have positive one half of the integral from one to zero of u to the negative one half. Let's write it in exponent form because now we're using the power rule. If we apply the power rule to this, we add one to it and take a, and divide it by, this is gonna be one half divided by one half, that's gonna be times two. So this is gonna be equal to pi over two plus one half times, this will become two u to the one half. Okay, let me write it as square root of x, it's better. Okay, now this part is gonna be evaluated from one to zero, okay? And let's go here. This is gonna be the same thing as pi over two plus, this two cancels this two. All you have is just the square root of u. So it's just square root of u evaluated from one to zero. Okay, what's that? This is equal to pi over two plus, if we plug in zero, this is gonna be zero, minus, plug in one, it's gonna be just square root of one. So, 
our answer is pi over 2 plus 0 minus 1. That's pi over 2 minus 1. And that is the answer to this crazy integral that was not really crazy if you separated them the way we did here and rationalized. Hope you learned something. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.